Welcome back to The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. It's time for Today in History, and I'm going back to the year 1927 to tell you a little bit about Saudi Arabia and where it all started from. You know, it's uh, mostly about the city of uh, Jeddah, but it was on this day that Britain recognized the sovereignty of Saudi. So let's start with uh, Jeddah itself, which of course is a major port city and, you know, initially was the capital of Saudi Arabia before uh, um, Riyadh um, uh, became the capital in the late, late 80s. So Jeddah was a major port in central Hejaz region, western Saudi Arabia, and lies along the Red Sea and the west of Mecca. The principal importance of Jeddah in this whole story is that it constituted a port of Mecca and was the site where majority of Muslims back then landed while journeying to the holy city of Mecca and Medina. In 1916, Jeddah and its Turkish garrisons surrendered to the British forces. It then formed part of the Kingdom of Hejaz until 1925 when it was captured by Ibn Saud. And then in 1927, on this day, the Treaty of Jeddah, the British recognized Saudi's sovereignty over the Hejaz and Nige uh, regions. Jeddah eventually was incorporated into Saudi Arabia. And of course, in 1947, the city walls were demolished. And there was a massive rapid expansion that took place at that time. After World War II, Jeddah was completely modernized and expanded with the new wealth acquired by the Saudi Arabia. Um, of course, from their oil and all the business that they were able to get into after their sovereignty was recognized. Um, its harbor was deepened and enlarged to accommodate larger vessels. And of course, the sale of oil became the major um, um, source of the country's uh, income back then. One of Saudi's largest cities and busiest seaports, Jeddah was also a diplomatic capital of the country and location of the Saudi's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and embassies before uh, all of this were transferred to Riyadh in the mid-1980s. So it, it's a story of, you know, Jeddah um, and of course, you know, flows into 1927 when Saudi Arabia itself was then recognized as a sovereign nation hmm. by the British. Interesting news regarding uh, Jeddah, 1927, and that important treaty. And uh, yes, good to know that uh, Saudi Arabia has grown a long way from where they were many years ago mm. to become one of the you know, most um, wealthiest countries in the Middle East. Absolutely. So yes, I'm talking about today in history. I'm going back to the year 2005. It's a very twisted and mixed up. Uh, event that happened this day in history because it was on this day in history that a convicted you know former sex offender married her victim so at the time this lady she was a teacher her name was Mary Kett Letonu she was 35 years old and uh, she had been having sexual relations with her student who was just 12 years old at the time she said the student told her that he loved him. A 12-year-old boy told a 35-year-old um, lady, a woman, you know, some sources say she was 24 at the time, that she loved him. And she was a married woman. She had four children, but she began a sexual relationship with her 12-year-old student called Philly Falatu. Right? She was, you know, she went to prison twice. She eventually was released. And after she, re she was released from prison in the year 2005, she and her, um, in the, yes, she and her st uh, student got married about nine months later. And that's because as at the time when she was sentenced to jail, she was actually pregnant for her 12-year-old students. I told you this story is mixed uh, up, is, is messed up. She was pregnant for her 12-year-old students, how right? How long did she go to jail? Sorry? How long was she in jail She, she was in jail for, for, for quite a while, for seven and a half years. Seven, <laughs> seven, seven and a half years she went to jail. So when she came out of jail, her student who was 12 years old at the time said he didn't want a situation where, you know, his child grows up under a roof with just one parent. So he wanted to get married to her. So, you know, the student and the teacher would both be um, training their child on that one roof. It was a very messed up story. It was really, really big at that time, you know, to see, <laughs> I can see the disgust on your face. Yeah. And it's so weird how the story has been twisted because if this was a man, if the teacher was a man, yeah. we know the amount of backlash that he would have received, that you basically sexually violated your student who was 12, 12 years old, year old, saying your student loves you, and you were having sexual relations, you impregnated your students, you know, and you say, okay, we're out, now we want to get married. It should have been different. But this lady eventually divorced her husband, you know, 
and got married to this man. And they began to feature on so many TV shows. This is just an example. The picture you're seeing is an example of one of the TV shows that they, you know, uh, you know featured in. They eventually got divorced. And, and the teacher died of cancer in 2020. It's just a very sad situation. I don't even know what, where to start from, you know, but you've already <laughs> mentioned one. You know, I, I don't think it would have been the same thing if it was a... If it was if a man. Sex, sexes were reversed. You know, if it was a male teacher assaulting a 12-year-old student, he probably would have been in jail for 40 years or longer. You didn't see... Um, and then, also, mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't miss the white privilege here. Um, because if it was a black teacher you know, uh, who, you know, was sexually it. assaulting a 12-year-old you know, a, a student... She definitely wouldn't get seven, just seven years in jail. Neither like, come know, out to marry a the child. A whole lifetime, you know, you know, because I've I've seen you know stories of people who have committed less, you know, uh, lesser crimes, you know, in the United States, blacks who have been sentenced to thirty years, twenty five years in jail, you know, but having sexual relations with a twelve year old, raping a twelve year old, um, you get seven years in jail. You're bold enough to come out and you know still get married to this you know uh, child, mm -hmm. because he's not old enough uh, to be married. Twelve, yeah, what when he was nineteen um, or twenty. Um, it's it's sickening to you know hear of things like this. You know, but yeah. Um, yes. But, forgive me, but cancer yeah. got her. They, but they were they were they were married for, for for a while. See, the thing about this one weird thing about the story, really, apart from you know this this particular one, is I think the mind of the teacher needed to really have an examine this Marie Kay because during interviews, um, asking her you know to go back in time to what happened. You know, when she was having sexual relations with her students, she said, you need to see her, you know, in those, those videos, she was laughing and say, oh, when she's teaching in class, eight-year-old boys were looking under her skirt and she would laugh yeah, and she would a, giggle, she happy person. that eight-year-old boys were looking on her skirts in class. She's a sick person. Wow. But anyway, uh, best of luck to her. And, um, um, well, she's late now. So she's, she's late now. I mean, the, the comment about this is that she manipulated the, the boy. That You know, when you even watch interviews, you can see how sad the boy looks like. The boy is clearly being manipulated, and she just took advantage of this guy and was a sexual predator. Yeah. So she, she should have been in jail, or the child should have been given to, you know, uh, the government to take care of the child until the you know, boy was old enough. Um, if it's here in Nigeria, of course, grandma will come in. Uh, they will, you know, uh, grandmas always would step in. You know, Definitely. But, you know, in that society, it's totally different. You know, once again, white privilege and gender, gender, gender privilege. Yes. yes. Um, uh, that's what I can see in the story. All right. Our first major conversation for today, we're moving to Kaduna State, where organized labor has suspended their strike to give space for dialogue. The federal government stepped in, of course, uh, through the Minister of Labor and, of course, uh, saying that the government of Kaduna State and the, the NLC will be meeting at 11 a.m. today to have a further discussion. So we'll get right into that after this short break. <laughs> 